Hello, hello, and welcome to episode one of Fallout 4, NCR Lone Ranger. The NCR Lone Ranger will be different from my other series, where since the character I'm playing is a female, I will not be voicing her inner thoughts. Instead, I will be playing part of a narrator, so there may be sections where, uh, you know, things are a little more silent than I normally would. So trust me, it's not dead air, it's just simply moving from place to place in uh, relative quiet. So, uh, if that does bother you, I am sorry. Uh, if I sh if it uh, is a real problem, please say so in the comments down below. Now with that being said, let's get going. <clears throat> The ranger had waited out the rad storm inside the small shack. Not much company other than some crazy ghoul doctor. She ain't had no problem with that. He didn't try to bite her, so she didn't need to shoot him. Till then, she was on a mission. She had heard a rumor that there was a, you know, vault out there somewhere. And why this was important? Well, two reasons. First, first being that it was her job. This vault was supposedly where a group of, uh, one of the no-good raider gangs called the Jackals were hanging out. Well, these Jackals, being raiders, were a problem. And they were originally from the Mojave, so it was her job to track down these Mojave gangs. Now, they were pushed out when the, uh, two biggest laws in the area, you know, the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel, and they teamed up. Yeah. When law, when the two biggest groups of law work together, that ain't no place for lawless people. So, something had to be done. And what they did, they went out east. Decided to, you know, carve their own way. Secondly, and more importantly, and more personally, she was out there for blood. See, there was this ornery, no-good, yellow-bellied snake. Went by the name of Kellogg. Well, he was a no-good man known for his murdering and his killing. And most importantly, of her family. Oh, yeah. Turns out he killed her husband and kidnapped her kid. And she was out here for his blood. And those jackals I talked about earlier? Yeah. They work for Kellogg, or at least that's what the rumors say. So Kellogg took them jackals, dragged them half and dragged them all the way across the United States. And you know what? She fo she followed them every step of the way. She wasn't much for talking. But that was her way. Plus, the long walk across the across the United States. Well, that'll that'll make anyone's social skills, you know, go a bit backwards instead of forwards. So, she had not gotten a reputation for being overly personal. Mostly all business, but you know, there are worse ways to be. other than being not terribly personal, she was also a crack shot. Of course, they don't give out them sequoias to just anybody who asks. I mean, ask anyone who asks. The answer is just no. Sometimes lining up that just perfect shot didn't always do you the best of world the best of luck. No no no, that ain't what happened.
Now you gotta sit down and pay attention. She didn't she didn't get killed by no blood bug. If she did, she wouldn't be a legend. She had found a while back that the real trick to deal with rad scorpions take out, take out them stingers that way you don't get you know stuck. So as I was saying this here Kellogg fella no good he's been killing his way across the United States and she'd been tracking him the whole way. Sometimes she couldn't tell if he was running from her or she was just chasing him as he went from job to job. All she knew is that she needed to go. Get him. Make him pay for the blood he spilled by spilling his own blood. Yeah, whatever was happening over there, she figured if they're blowing themselves up, it ain't worth her time. Let's find some enemies that, you know, bad guys that really needed it. Not her special brand of wasteland justice. But she's got herself in a whole heap of trouble, doesn't it? Well, that's what she thought, too. No, 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 no. She didn't get so much trouble, she died from it. Oh, no. She was way more skilled than that. It'd take more than a couple blood bugs and a few super mutants to take care of her.
She took a second to assess her surroundings. She knew there was blood bugs to the left of her, super mutants to the right, so she had to figure maybe she should take her time, stay quiet, stay low. Don't let either of them catch wind of her. Now, admittedly, sneaking around ain't exactly the uh, most noblest of actions, but sometimes not getting shot or not getting stung is a way to not get dead. And as she, as she made her way around, she saw herself a little, a little camper on top of the hill. Decided, well, let's go see what's there. Sadly, for her at least, it was a robot. Is it one of them old sentry bots? Trying not to get shot. Well, going up against sentry bots, not a way to not get shot. No, no, no. She wasn't taken out by no sentry. As I was saying, she had to keep herself low, slow, and quiet to not be noticed by the blood bugs or the super mutants. Because if either caught good wind of her, well, she knew she didn't want that. Besides, as I was saying before, sometimes the best way to live is to not get shot. Now, one good thing about staying low and quiet is when your enemies ain't, you can hear them coming. So she made her way down that road after avoiding who knows what for why no for who knows why reasons. But she came across what looked to be a slaughtered caravan. Curious as to what it could be. Trying to be Turns out it was a man named Fred O'Connell. A couple of bodyguards. Shame seeing him laid out across the road like that. But she couldn't stay and dawdle or pay her respects. She had a job to do. An important one. Find the man who killed her husband. Kill him. She had every intention of putting a bullet between that man's eyes. And she'd been practicing on all her whole way here and doing exactly that. Now. Along the way, something did catch her eye few buildings on top of a hill. And when she got up there, you know what she found? Go on, guess. That's right. She found herself a cemetery. Yeah. Now, 
people go, why would you put your cemetery on top of a hill? Won't things, you know, roll down? The answer is, yeah, they would. Which is why they didn't build the cemetery on top of the hill. That's where they had the crypts in their mausoleums. Instead, they kept the graves down below. So, she figured, why not go look at that there graveyard? People leave all sorts of useful things for the dead. And dead ain't gonna, you know, use it. Heck, they won't even know it's gone. Seems that no matter where you go, raiders raiders will get there before you. Of course, raiders are a problem for everyone, which is why taking them down ain't no real problem. No one's ever going to be upset about you killing raiders. At least no decent folk, at least. Most people see that as a public service or general kindness. So after looking at the uh, crypts and mausoleums that were up on top, she decided to have herself a look down below. Besides, it was a rather lovely pattern. She had some circles, lines leading in, and uh, besides, she thought she might find something interesting or valuable, other than, you know, the hub flowers she'd done favored. But, you know, as it go, you don't always get what you want. Usually get what you need, though. Well, after leaving that cemetery, she came across one of a whole different sort. A great big junk pile. And, well, once again, you'd be surprised what kind of handy things that were left out if you know where to look. And, of course, the sound of gunfire did draw, does draw attention. Settler. So after a few seconds of high intensity combat, she found herself in the center of a whole dead pile of mole rats. Ain't really no worse for the wear it for it. Of course, only real good thing about mole rats is the meat. Travel the waste long enough, and any real meat seem pretty good to you. Of course, could travel down that line of thinking too long, and you find yourself eating people. So you gotta avoid that. A 
well. Let's go see what's all up in here now. Of course. She thought to herself, more, more mole rats. What else could it be? Someone stashed a load of, load of weapons here. Some armor, too. Well, she wouldn't normally take such things, figured. Well, might as well. Taking a look on top of that there rotten landfill, she found herself some kind of totem. Didn't seem much use though, so she just went on her way. She took herself a second to stop and think and look around and see if there might be an easier way. And she remembered there's a road. The road had been blocked off, clearly by some pre-war military. But one thing you learn when you travel the wastes, when you see some pre-war military, usually you can find some ammo. Just took a little bit of searching. Raiders. Well, not, ain't much to do about that than take care of that problem. Oh, they had harassed a settler, carrying some letters. <sighs> Poor soul. Well, one good thing did come of this. She did find herself some Molotov cocktails. Get herself a bit more variety in how she need, how she could defend herself going down that road she came across what was once a drive-in graveyard now it was a graveyard of cars all staring at a giant wall sure there may have been my at one time, might have been more to it. However, at this time, not quite so much. Of course, 
Lunch decided to deliver itself as more mole rats decided to show up and try to give her a hard time. But after killing the first, most seem to have scattered. No, 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 you ain't listening close enough. I didn't say that she died from mole rats. That's just ridiculous. No, no, no. She decided to take out some, uh, like I said, first she took out a pair of raiders. And she found the settler that had a couple letters. And the Molotov cocktails. Then she went out the road and took care of the mole rats. Or at least she thought about it, but then realized, you know, maybe she should take a few minutes to herself. Assess her situation and realize that ain't exactly pointing in the right direction. He's not where she wants to. Besides, it's a long road ahead of her. No need to stop and rest. Now, one of the most noticeable colors ever is the color white. It's so bright, and uh, any bit of dirt stands out. So when you see some clean white after wandering the waste for a while, it stands out, and it makes you take notice. So when she came to that excavation site, well, it did pique her interest. There's a man there, Sully Mathis. Excuse me. Looking to earn some caps? I could use a hand here if you're all done gawking, you know. I could probably help for a few caps extra. Just had to push, didn't you? Fifty caps, take it or leave it. Help you with what exactly? I'm trying to fix this old water pump. Should be plenty of scrap in here. If I can get it drained out. What do you need help with? Uh, the pump isn't in top shape, but it should at least start. There must be some leaky connections flooding me out. Think you could fix them? The leaks will be underwater. Look for bubbles, and you should find them. Well, that seems simple enough. And she figured, after being the Mojave and crossing the Great Dust Bowl for so dang long, well, a nice, ref a nice dip in some water might actually do her a world of good. So she looked around, saw at least two of them spots she needed to deal with, and decided to take the plunge.
Now the first two had been easy enough to spot. The third one did elude her for a minute. But with her sharp eyes, it didn't take her long to figure it all out. a ticket. You do the honors. Hit that switch on the end of the pump. Well, Sully seemed to be all sorts of grateful. Just listen to her go. Wait a second. Did you hear that? Of course. When you, you know, little did she realize when you got yourself a whole heap of water, you also got yourself a whole heap of trouble from the local from the local boys known as Myrlers. Good karma's paying off. Of course, she'd learn that lesson in time. Of course, she ain't never been used to a place that as wet as Boston is. I off this intake, I can get enough pressure. <clears throat> Meyer looks. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that started him up. Anyway, I still got some tinkering to do on this thing. Shouldn't be too hard now, though. Thanks for pitching in. Here's a little something before you clear. Well, this silly person seemed to be amicable enough, had a cook fire that he's willing to share, and a few trailers that she could bunk herself down in. She figured she'd earn herself a rest from all this. So, after doing a bit of looking around, she figured she'd go rest. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you're enjoying my content as much as I'm enjoying it for all of you. As I, as I, as much as I enjoy making it, for all of you. Uh, this is the f episode one, so if you can all please like, comment, uh, and thumbs up more here more than anywhere else. Uh, that will help people direct it to, to episode one more than any other episode. So it's be the most helpful, uh, all of you. So that'd be greatly appreciated. Just so if other people like this, they can find episode one easier. Anyway, uh, if you like my com my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to get in contact with me, just follow the links down below, and it'll take you to my Discord server where I'm available all the time, except for when I'm sleeping, or uh, working my terrible day job, or uh, what's it? making these videos for you. Uh, if you do not like my content, then please leave a thumbs down below and a comment as to why, nice. so I can try to get better. Uh, this is the first of a... Uh, series so any comments at this time will help me put me on a better trajectory than stuff I've already been doing uh, also please comment if you like the narrator thing I'm doing because uh, well it's new and I don't know entirely if it's uh, you know appreciated or liked so uh, I'd appreciate some feedback on that anyway thank you all for joining me and I guess I'll see you next time